Before we begin today's video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Discord buddy Speed for recommending this challenge. You're a champ. When you start a new game of Skyrim, there are a handful of beginner weapons at your disposal. A war axe, a sword, or even a bow. But there's one weapon that most people wouldn't ever use for more than a few minutes after the start. Can you beat Skyrim with only an iron dagger? So let's go over the rules, and why I picked the iron dagger over something worse. Rule 1. The iron dagger is the only weapon I can use, and I can't dual wield them. I can smith the dagger to higher qualities, but I cannot enchant it. Enchanting armor is fine though. Number 2. I can't heal myself with spells or scrolls, only potions and food. Number 3. I can't use shouts unless the game specifically requires me to use them, or I'm battling Alduin because I'm not waiting 30 minutes for him to land so I can hit him. Now, the reason I picked the iron dagger over the wooden sword or the fork is because I actually wanted to try and kill things. I don't think I would have killed almost anything if I used something worse than the iron dagger. The game is also set to master mode, let's go. Everyone has seen the opening to Skyrim almost a billion times, so let's just skip to character creation. You might have noticed that I have a face cam up, and that's because I stream this part on Twitch for everyone to watch. I'll be streaming tidbits of the challenges I'm working on for most future videos, so check out my Twitch channel in the link in the description. I went with an orc for what feels like the first time in forever, and that was so I had better heavy armor and smithing skill starters. I named myself Stabby Charlie because I thought it was funny, and then Alduin attacked. I ran away as fast as I could and went into the keep with Rayloff because I wasn't following an Imperial through the keep. Rayloff cut my binds and we got attacked by some Imperials. I couldn't help Rayloff with this fight for the most part, so I just hid behind this wall hoping that Rayloff would kill both of them quickly. At one point I checked to see if Rayloff had made any headway, and he had. He killed the Imperial Captain, so now I had access to some heavy armor and an iron dagger. My first thoughts are that this could be worse, and at some point I'll be able to smith it to be better. Deeper in the keep, we're faced with Imperial soldiers, torturers, and more Imperial soldiers. This part doesn't really translate well for how the challenge will actually be since I have Rayloff helping me. We get ambushed by some spiders, and I almost bite the big one when a spider does a little too much damage to me. The bear was pretty easy to kill, but that's only because Bethesda made this bear much easier to kill than all the other bears in the game. Once I'm outside, I run to the Guardian Stones and pick the Warrior Stone as mine. Now it's time to test out how I can handle combat by myself. Oh yeah, that's what I was looking for. It's a lot harder without Rayloff here to help me, and while I do kill these two bandits, I get slaughtered by these two on the bridge. More than once. I decided that it was time to go since I tested my weapons and I couldn't kill these two, but something miraculous happened. I forgot that there was a trap here and I set it off and killed one of the bandits. I felt like that was a sign that I hadn't finished this place yet, so I tried to kill the other bandit and succeeded. It was incredibly short lived though, as toward the last few bandits I kept getting killed. I left and made my way to Riverwood. The first thing I did was upgrade my dagger. It jumped from 6 damage to 8. Lovely. This lady said that I have to go tell the Jarl of Whiterun that Riverwood needs some more defenses, so I make that my next location. Nothing happened on the way to Whiterun, and I made it inside the city walls. I tried to kill Heimskir since his constant babbling bothers me, but I got killed pretty quick. In Dragon's Reach, I interrupt the Jarl and tell him about Riverwood. He sends some troops down there and he tells me that we're going to talk to his court wizard. The wizard tells me that I need to acquire the Dragonstone from Bleak Falls Barrow for some reason, and I'm off to prepare for the dangerous journey. There are two key skills that help me with this challenge, smithing and alchemy. Smithing so I could make a better dagger and armor, and alchemy so I could make healing potions because I ended up needing a lot of them. I started off by making a few health potions so I had some, and then I smithed a few daggers to increase my skill. I also chopped some firewood to make some iron arrows, but Sigurd really wanted his chopping block back, so I told him what I thought of that. Put him on the list! I left Whiterun to loot the farms on its outskirts since they had some wheat, which can be used to make healing potions. Then I went back to Dragon's Reach to make some more potions. I didn't think I was ready to go to Bleak Falls Barrow, so I decided to try something a little easier first. There was a fort occupied by bandits nearby, and I thought that would be a good test to see if I'm ready for Bleak Falls. This was actually pretty easy for the most part, and I was able to make my way inside of the fort. This was not easy, however. Anytime someone has a two-handed weapon, I know I'm in for a challenge. They kill me so fast, I never really get the time to do anything. The fort was a bust for the most part, as I left rather quickly after entering. I walk around for a while, killing some Imperials along the way, until I land at Redoran's Retreat. It's a cave that's also filled with bandits. This cave was so much easier than the fort. Yeah, I died to the bandit chief at the end a few times, but I eventually killed him. I fast traveled back to Dragon's Reach to make some potions with the ingredients I picked up in my travels, then I chopped some more firewood to make arrows. For some reason, I thought I would be ready for Bleak Falls Barrow now, so I went to Riverwood to start the trek up the mountain. There were a few bandits on the way up the mountain, and a few in front of the Barrow itself, but they were pushovers. Just normal bandits, nothing special. The inside of the Barrow was also easy for the time being. Just some more bandits. 
Then I made my way to the room I was dreading, the spider room. Normally this would be pretty easy, just get in there and kill it, but not this time. The spider didn't do that much damage with a physical attack. It was the poison I had to worry about. I died once and figured that it would be easier to just cut Arvel down and kill him before the spider killed me. It worked and I was going to leave, but it felt a little cheeky to not kill the spider. So I went at it again and I almost died. I ran far enough away to be able to wait so I could heal since I was out of potions and I went back to it. Eventually the spider fell to my very sharp dagger. Now here comes something I didn't expect to give me troubles, Draugr. The normal Draugr weren't too bad to deal with, it was the restless Draugr. They could use frost magic and that stuff really hurt since they had no magic protection. I died many times before I decided that I really needed better gear if I was going to continue the main quest. So now it's time for a little grinding. I head back to Whiterun and start picking every single ingredient that I can find. When I was done picking the ingredients, I headed to Arcadia's Cauldron to make some potions for profit. With a bit more gold in my pocket, I decided that I would go back into the wild to do something. I wandered around for a bit until I came across Silent Moon's camp and decided that it would be a good idea to try and get the jump on the bandits by the forge. It didn't work very well. I tried the exact same tactic again and it worked. I looted the bandits and took the weapons to disenchant for some easy enchanting levels. On the inside of the camp, there were a few bandits, but nothing I couldn't handle. I went back to Whiterun to sell my loot and buy all of the iron ingots I could find, and got to work chopping more wood for arrows. When I started smithing, I was at 28, and by the time I made all of the arrows, I was at level 35. I leveled up, and so I don't have to touch on the subject again, I'll tell you what every single level consisted of for the rest of the game. I put every point I got into health, I never leveled up my stamina. I think later on in the playthrough I accidentally leveled magic up, but whatever. The perks I always went for were in one-handed, heavy armor, smithing, and alchemy. I did put some other points into speech for better prices later on, but for the most part that's what every single level looked like. Now that my smithing was high enough, I could make dwarven armor and that would be a real help later on. I could have just bought the ingots and saved myself some time and effort, but I decided that it would be a great idea to get the ingots from the Dwemer Ruins because if I can't finish Bleak Falls Barrow, I'll definitely be able to take on the Dwemer Ruins, right? So I took a carriage to Markarth and went into the city to stop the poor murder of this woman and got awarded a necklace I could sell later. Back outside, I started my journey to find the Dwemer Ruins. I couldn't remember where it was exactly, but I knew there was one pretty close to Markarth. Not much happened while I was searching, but I did get absolutely mauled by a saber cat and made a note to not go that way. Since I was just kinda wandering around until a Dwemer Ruin icon popped up on the compass, I decided to wade with the fish so I could collect them for potions later. I eventually arrived at a shrine, and I was going to check out some other places where a Dwemer Ruins might be, but I lucked out and saw one on the compass. Little did I know that this was full of afflicted people who were part of the shrine quest that I ignored, and I got owned. I'd have to find another Dwemer Ruins if I wanted Dwarven Metal. I traveled back to Whiterun Stables and took a carriage to Dawnstar because I remember there being Dwemer Ruins in the area. Not too long into my quest, I saw the icon and made haste for the ruins. It was overrun with bandits, and they were becoming easier and easier to deal with. Once the bandits outside were dealt with, I made my way inside to find more bandits. One of the most used tactics in this playthrough was bashing people with my dagger so I could get a few unguarded hits in. A little deeper in the ruins, and I'm greeted by two bandits using magic. I still don't have magic protection, so I died incredibly fast. In the end, I had to take off my armor and sneak past both of them. Now I was introduced to the first set of dwarven spheres in the ruins, and they had it out for the bandits. I helped them kill the bandits and hid in the ledge so they couldn't see me. I went in for the kill, but I somehow knew this would happen. I couldn't even make a dent in these guys, they hit for so much damage, and I was forced to make a retreat back to Whiterun. My god, I feel like I've been talking for ages and I'm not even done with Bleak Falls Barrow yet. Back at Whiterun, I decided to fork over the money for some dwarven ingots so I could make my armor. I made sure to buy enough to upgrade it too. Now I felt very ready for Bleak Falls Barrow. Hey, I'm actually doing pretty well against the Draugr now. Until I ran out of potions and I had to kill this Draugr who was wielding a battle axe. Ugh! I can't win in this playthrough. The restless Draugr did way too much damage and without potions I was a goner. I'm this far in the challenge and I can't even beat Bleak Falls Barrow with decent armor and a decent dagger. Back to Whiterun I guess. I needed to do something and I had just the right idea. It's time for another ingredient picking montage. Hey, that song from the Krusty Krab training video was supposed to grow right here, but it's gonna make me demonetized if I use it, so here's me being stupid. Okay, enough of that. My friend Speed was in voice chat with me in Discord and suggested that I head to Windhelm because there were a lot of wheat crops growing there. I took his advice and it was well worth it. Now I can go back to Whiterun and make some more healing potions. 
or so I thought. I wanted to make as many healing potions as I could, but they barely gave me any experience in alchemy, and I wanted better healing potions, so I decided to buy some training from Arcadia. But it still wasn't enough. This challenge was quickly taking a steep turn down a very grindy path. Let's condense it down a bit. I went to Solitude for some reason and picked all of the ingredients I could. Then I traveled back to the outskirts of Whiterun and started to catch some more orange butterflies. Bandit attack! I went to Riften to steal all of the fish from the barrels, then I finally made my way back to Whiterun for some potion making. And it's still not enough. You've gotta be kidding me. I'm running out of easy skills to level up so I can keep buying training every level. The only thing I could think of to do was to start pickpocketing since it was a fairly easy skill to level up. I'm doing everything I can to avoid Bleak Fall Sparrow. Not very much to talk about with the pickpocketing I did, but it was pretty fun, and if y'all want to see a Skyrim pickpocket challenge, let me know in the comments. After nearly an hour of pickpocketing, I was ready to finally make some decent potions. I trained my alchemy up to 40 and put a perk point into the basic alchemy perk, and started making potions. I could now make potions that healed me for 60 points apiece, and I was happy with that. I could also make potions that restore my health and fortify it for a bit. Now I am finally, finally ready for Bleak Falls Barrow. Oh yeah, this is so much easier with good healing potions. I just plowed through all of the Draugr in my way and made it to the final chamber, which I was slightly worried about, but the Draugr Overlord was a pushover, and I finally retrieved the Dragonstone. Hell yeah! Only six hours into the playthrough. Back to Farangar Secret Fire, and it's time to fight a dragon with an iron dagger. This wouldn't be a real projection of how well I can kill a dragon since I have so many people helping me, but let's see what happens. Oh yeah, look at that damage. Who's bad? I am. I was really happy that I got a cool finisher on the dragon, and I was ready for the next step in the main quest. Back at Dragon's Reach, the Jarl was babbling about something. I wasn't really paying attention. All I knew is that I needed to climb the 7,000 steps and visit the Greybeards. The easiest way was to head up the mountain from Iverstead, so I started walking there so I could collect plants and level up a bit. The only interesting thing that happened on the way to Iverstead was me killing a bunch of bandits in an old rundown post. In Iverstead, I immediately began climbing the mountain and ran past the enemies that I knew I couldn't kill right now. Mainly Ice Wraith and Frost Trolls, and I made it to High Hrothgar. The grey bearded men told me I was a dragonborn and said they would teach me the ways of the Shout. Which means I have to use the Shouts, but it's okay by the rules I gave myself in the challenge. I did everything the Greybeards asked me to do, and they told me my training would be finished when I brought them back the horn of Jurgen Windkarler but I decided that it would be a better idea to go back to that Dwemer ruin I tried to clear before. It was a very bad idea. I could kill the Dwarven Spheres now, but it takes so much time and almost all of my potions. I made it to the elevator to go further down in the ruins and decided to not continue onwards. I went back to Whiterun and leveled my alchemy a bit more and started chopping wood so I could make some Dwarven arrows for easy smithing levels. I still needed a few more smithing levels to make Orcish armor, so I went to Riften to get some smithing training and was able to acquire the perk for Orcish smithing. I didn't have enough ingots to make all of the armor, so I decided that I needed to visit my orcish cousins at one of their strongholds. There was a bear in front of the gates to the stronghold I found, and I had to run past it and let the orc guards do my dirty work. I went into the mine and mined the rest of the ore I needed for my armor. Back at Whiterun, I took Lydia for a stroll while I made my armor, and decided that taking her on a true adventure wouldn't be very fair, so I told her to go home. Now I was very prepared for the rest of the main quest, and it was time to find the horn of Jurgen Windcaller. The closest location to Ustengrav was Morthal, so I fast traveled there and made a break for it. The outside of Ustengrav was overrun with bandits, and I had to take them out. My dagger was very good at this point in the challenge, and did 17 damage per swing, so the bandits still weren't too much of a challenge. The inside was a little more painful though, as there were necromancers everywhere, and I still hadn't gotten any magical protection items, so after a few deaths, I just decided to book it past them all. After I got past all of the necromancers, there were Draugr to deal with. But they were just normal Draugr and Restless Draugr, so it wasn't a problem. I came to this part where you have to use Whirlwind Sprint to get past, and I tried to see if I could get past without it, but I never managed to. Now all I have to do is grab the horn, and it's not here. But there is a mysterious note that tells me where to go find the horn. So I went to Riverwood and got a room for rent at the inn, and wouldn't you know it, Delphine took my horn. What an asshole. She took me into her sex dungeon, and I told her I was the Dragonborn, and she wanted me to prove it by killing a dragon in front of her. I can do that, right? Straight to Kynesgrove this time, no messing around, let's fight a dragon. I got the drop on him, and this is great. I do so little damage to this thing, it's not even funny. I had plenty of potions though, so all I had to do was slowly whittle down its health until I won. Yay! A victory! Now Delphine would answer some questions, and by that I mean she already has another quest for me. Great. She wants me to infiltrate the Thalmor Embassy and figure out if they know anything about the dragons coming back to Skyrim. 
I went back to Riverwood and spoke to Delphine more about the Thalmor Embassy quest, and I was told to go to Malborn in Solitude, as he would be able to sneak in supplies for the quest. I gave him my armor, my dagger, and some potions. Now to go back to Delphine and take a carriage to the party. Now, this is when the challenge took a turn for the worst for a while. Getting access to the parts of the Thalmor Embassy I needed to go to was easy, but surviving the encounters after that was not. All of the Thalmor used a mixture of magic and melee that made this portion incredibly difficult. I kept dying over and over and over again. I tried to kill them, I tried to run away from them, and it was a mixture of this that took me to the end of the quest line. But I couldn't open this hatch to escape as I didn't have the key, and the only way to get the key was to kill this guard or steal it from her, and I kept getting killed so I couldn't kill her, and I couldn't steal it from her because I was being attacked constantly! I had only one choice in this scenario, and that was to start the whole embassy over and attempt to sneak my way past all of the Thalmor in the embassy. This was a lot of work though, and my sneak skill was mediocre at best. At one point, I actually had to farm a few levels in sneak before I made it back to where I was. I stole the key from this woman and left with all the information books I collected along the way. Back to Delphine. With some new info on a man named Esbern, Delphine told me to head to Riften and talk to Brynjolf, as he'd be the one to know where Esbern was hiding. So it was time to go to Riften. Brynjolf had me do some work for him before he'd tell me where Esbern was, so I did. Apparently, Esbern was hiding somewhere in the Ratways, and I had to find him. The Ratways were a cakewalk, and I cleared the whole way through to where Esbern was rather quickly. Esbern was a very paranoid man, and it took him a whole minute to unlock his door to let me in. And as soon as I told him I was the Dragonborn, he was down to come back to Riverwood with me. The Thalmor were not having that, though, as they were now patrolling the section of the Ratways where Esbern was located, and gave me plenty of trouble on the way out. But we eventually made it. Now I had to go back to Riverwood again, so Delphine and Esbern could talk and talk they did. Esbern explained to us that we needed to find Alduin's wall so we could learn more about what was bringing the dragons back to life and how we could deal with it, so that's where we were headed next. The closest location I had available to travel to was the Left Hand Mine, so I went there and swam around for a bit until I made my way to Karthspire. I ignored the Forsworn outside of Karthspire and went inside. I put a Briarheart down rather easily and made my way through the easy to solve puzzles until I discovered Skyhaven Temple. Inside of Skyhaven, we discover Alduin's Wall, and Esbern informs us that after examining the wall, it looks like we'll need a special shout to fight Alduin and the dragons. So now it's time to go back to the Greybeards. They very much refuse to help me until this guy has an aneurysm, and they agree. They teach me the clear sky shout so I can reach the top of High Hrothgar and speak to their leader. The walk up the rest of the mountain was horrible. There were a bunch of ice wraiths, and I'm still quite vulnerable to magic damage. They died in the end, but not before making me waste a lot of my potions. At the top of the mountain is Parthenax, a pretty friendly dragon that wants me to shout at him because it's tradition? I don't know. He teaches me the fire breath shout, and I shout at him in the friendliest way possible. He seemed pleased, and explained that if I wanted the shout to fight Alduin, I'd need an Elder Scroll so he could watch the shout in the past. Which means I have to go on another long-winded quest for something. Hooray. I was told to check the College of Winterhold to find the information I needed, so I fast-traveled there and attempted to speak to the mage guarding the bridge. But the town got attacked by a dragon, and there was no way I was fighting a dragon right now. So I traveled to Windhelm to wait until the dragon left. But there was another dragon attacking Windhelm, so I had to wait in a building until that one disappeared. Then I went back to Winterhold to talk to the mage. I shouted my way in, as the dragonborn does, and I was on my way to talk to the local librarian. The librarian was not happy to see me, and threatened me with violence if I was mean to his books. He did grab me a few books about the Elder Scrolls, and then proceeded to inform me of Septimus Cygnus, after I read them, who was apparently knowledgeable about the scrolls, so let's go find him. I find Septimus, and he's quite the character, let me tell you that. I didn't understand a thing he said, but I was given some items and a new compass location, so I guess I was off to find the Elder Scroll. The new marker wasn't too far away, and pointed me in the direction of a Dwemer ruin. I arrived, and immediately decided to go back to Whiterun because I was very low on potions. I'll leave it short for everyone, I just wandered around the countryside picking more ingredients and made some potions. Back to the ruins. I entered the tower, which was the wrong area to enter, and found a lot of Dwemer scrap metal. And I just couldn't say no to grabbing everything I could get my hands on. Sadly, I didn't have the room for all of the metal, but my Discord buddy suggested that I drop some of the stuff and acquire the Steedstone perk. So that's what I did. I cannot state the importance that smithing and alchemy played in this challenge. I don't think it would have been nearly as easy as it was without grinding them both out. I went back to Whiterun again and made a crap ton of Dwarven arrows. Now let's get the Elder Scroll for real. This area sucked immensely. The beginning wasn't too bad since there were only Dwarven spider bots to worry about, but as soon as the spheres showed up, I knew I was in for some trouble. 
I still struggled to kill these guys, and even though I made a handful of potions before entering, I still didn't have enough to get me through the whole place, so I had to run. Run past every single enemy in the area. I did stop to loot the chests, though. The next area wasn't much better. There were Falmer everywhere, and while I could kill them, there was one that used magic, and that was still a problem for me. So I continued running until I hit the elevator to Blackreach. Blackreach was pretty calm for the most part. I looted some Darien's house for some extra ingredients and made my way to the room that held the Elder Scroll. I'm not gonna lie, it took me like 10 minutes to figure out this puzzle, and that was with some help from the Discord buddies. Eventually I got the puzzle lock opened and grabbed the scroll. Now it's time to do something foolish. Let's fight Alduin with minimal supplies because I'm a big stupid. Back at the Third of the World, Parthenax told me to read the scroll in the Time Rift, and I was greeted by a very long cutscene, but at least after watching it, I learned the Dragon Ren shout, and I was totally ready to fight Alduin. Not! Oh my sweet Lord Jesus, save me from my sins! I cannot state enough how stupid hard this fight was. Meteors crashing from the sky, Alduin breathing frost at me, and just in general the amount of time it actually took to do significant damage to Alduin? It was a real battle against Alduin, not a minute long boxing match against Muhammad Ali. I ran out of potions shortly into the fight, and I had to rely on hiding to heal my character. But that barely worked, as Alduin would just launch meteors from the sky and kill me. I eventually got him on the ground, and just kept on going at him while quicksaving very often. And that was my downfall. I quicksaved at the most inopportune time ever, and I was stuck loading in with low health while Alduin blasted me with frost breath. I was done for. There was no way to get out of this that I could see. So I had to do the whole fight over again. And by this point, I just wanted the challenge to end. I was so over it. Okay, let's not tarry as the video is getting pretty long. I had to spend the next hour of my life going to all of the different alchemy stores that I could find and buying healing ingredients and anything that was cheap so I could make some potions to get through the fight. I also decided to buy a ring of wielding and break it down to enchant some armor for better one-handed damage. I still didn't think I was ready to fight Alduin, but this is about the best I can do. This time the fight went in my favor. Yes, there were a couple of close calls, but I fought very hard to end the fight with Alduin. After a considerable amount of time, it had been done. I beat Alduin with my dagger of choice, but I wasn't done. I had to go to Sovngarde and beat Alduin once and for all, but for that I'd need a ride. Time to go to Dragon's Reach and capture a dragon. And by that, I mean let's host a peace treaty meeting between the Stormcloaks and Imperials, because that's the Dragonborn's job, right? After enough politics to last me forever, Yara Balgruff was all good to let me capture a dragon in his keep. And I did. I could have left right after the dialogue with the dragon, but first, I needed to stock up for the last battle. Time to go buy more ingredients. Now, we come to the last problem in the run. My last recording got corrupted, and now I have to do it over again. Like right now, as I'm writing this, I'm about to do the whole last hour of the game again. I hate my life. Well, at least it only took 30 minutes this time. When I arrived at Skuldafen, I just ran away. There was no way I could kill a dragon as well as a bunch of Draugr wits. Inside of Skuldafen, there were many more Draugr to flee from, and a puzzle that originally took me a very long time to get right, but I breezed past it this time. Deeper in Skuldafen, there were more Draugr. Who would have guessed? I just ran past them and made my way back outside. I kept running until I came to the Dragon Priest and I ran past him into Sovngarde. In Sovngarde, all I had to do was fight Sun to gain access to the Great Hall. I didn't actually fight him, I just led him over the cliff. Now that I had access, all I had to do was talk to the Great Warriors in the Hall and get ready for the fight of a lifetime. The Warriors were more than willing to help me, and after we shouted Alduin's dreaded mist away, it was time for the final fight. Okay. This fight was so much easier than the first Alduin fight. He barely attacked me at all, so all I had to do was constantly hit him with my dagger and dragon rend. It took a few minutes, but Alduin eventually fell to my iron dagger, and I was ready to go back to Skyrim and celebrate Alduin's defeat. After a short chat with Parthenax, I climbed to the tallest peak of High Hrothgar and threw my iron dagger off the mountain so I'd never have to use it again, and I beat Skyrim with only an iron dagger. Never attempt this, at least not on master difficulty. It's hard, and it's not fun. The amount of time that you have to put into making yourself a tank that can do enough damage to be productive is not worth it. But if you do try it, let me know how it went for you in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, think about subscribing to the channel and liking the video, as that stuff helps out a bunch. Check out my Discord server and my Twitch for sneak peeks at the next challenge I'm working on. The links are in the description. And until next time, 
Stay safe out there, and peace out.